Hey guys, I'm going to show you all the ways that you can send data back and forth between components in Angular. So the first way is to use input binding. So let me give you an example. Right now I have a child component which just has an input. And then I have a parent component which just has that child displayed there. And so it's just a basic input with a value there. So let's go back and inside of this child, I'm going to change this value. I'm going to just give it a variable inside the class. Now let's say that um, in the parent, I want to change that value, right? Because right now it's just kind of stuck in the child and I have no way to change it from the parent. So what you can do is use input binding. So here I can say amount and then pass in the value that I want to give it. Right, so whatever this is has to match the variable here, but you also need something else too. You need to have at input, and then you need to import that from the Angular core, right? Otherwise, um, outside components will not be able to provide the value as an input, okay? So again, this needs to match, um, you know, whatever you use um, in here, okay? And so now you should see that the value is 200, even though the, the child has 40. So basically the input binding will override um, that value. So that's a quick, easy way to um, send data like that. You can add, you know, however many you need and then grab the value here from the child. Now you can also customize this further. Like let's say I want to add five, you know, to whatever values come in from the input. Um, so what you can do is just get rid of this for a second. I'm gonna create a private variable called amount. And then right below the input binding, I'm going to say get amount, which is going to return that, that variable here. And then I'm also going to call set amount, which is going to take in a value, which is the new number that we're assigning to it. And then that's going to set it to here. Okay. So basically what this is, it's, it's really the same thing, but it just customizes your getter and setter methods. Basically, you know, when we return the amount to the view and when we set it here. So now, um, instead of, you know, assigning the value directly, we can intercept it. So let's say whenever a new value comes in, I want to add, um, I don't know, 50 to it, right? So we can do that. And so now you'll see that the value comes in as 250, right? So we get it from the input binding, but then we also can add logic to intercept it, right? And you can do the same thing here in the getter. Another way is to use an output event. Um, so let's take a quick look at how that works. I'm gonna comment this out for right now. And then right here, I'm gonna add at output. And then you wanna import that from the Angular core as well. And so I'll just name it amount change. It's gonna be a new event emitter of type number, right? So the event, um, and then go ahead and import that from the Angular core. The type is going to be whatever it is that you're emitting to um, to the output. So obviously the number is going to change. And so here we're going to go ahead and, and emit that here. So it's going to be a type number. So whenever the value changes, that's when you want to emit it to here. And so the way you do that is right here in our setter, right? This is where we're changing the number. This is the only place we change it for right now. What we do is we say this dot amount change emit and then we give it the new value so now anywhere that um, that is displaying the child component can get notification whenever the value changes right so let me show you how this works so remember here we're sent we're sending in that amount we're emitting it here to the output so here in the parent what i can do is i can say on i mean amount change and then i'll just create a method here called on amount change And so I'm going to, and also I'm going to pass in the event, right? That'll give us the number from, from here. So I'm going to go ahead and create that in my parent component. And I'll just log something for right now. Now this is going to be called initially and then should be called any any other time that the value changes. So um, I'm gonna add a button here, my child, so that I can change the amount, right? So just create a quick button here. And 
and just create a click event that says change amount. So then I'll just create that down here. And this will just take in that amount and I don't know, add 100 to it. So you want to make sure you don't do it to the private one, right? Because then nothing's going to be emitted in the event. You want to do it to this variable because then that'll call the setter, which is going to assign it to the new value. And then it's going to emit it here to the event. And it'll be displayed in the view because we have this getter here, which returns, um, you know, the one that's keeping track of it for us. Okay. So then let's go ahead and test this out. So this is the button here in our trial. I'm going to hit that. And you'll see that it sends it out. So initially it, it sends that a message, that new number 200, then adding 100 every time and sends that event. So just to recap, you know, we change the child, we change the amount here in the child, which sends an event, um, which outputs an event. And here in the parent, we get, we call a method whenever that, that changes, right? And then we can grab the value, the new value. And that's how we we kind of tie things together and let and you know we get the new value that was sent back. Okay. The next way is to use local variable. So let's take a look at what this looks like. Um, so this child component has this method called change amount, right? But let's say in the parent I wanted to access that, right? Or I, just let's just say I wanted to access anything in this component, right? Um, so there's an easy way to do that. So what I'll do first is I'm going to comment this button out. And, and I'm going to add the same button here in the parent. Um, and okay. And so then here in the child component, right? So to add a variable, you just add a hash and then you name it whatever you want, right? So I'll just name it child. And so then here, um, or anywhere in the view, really, you can say child dot, and that'll have access now to everything that's in the child components class. Right, so I can call the method from the child change amount, right? So remember, this is a parent and I'm calling the child's method, which is this change amount, right? So that's an easy way to do that. So we'll just verify that this works. So I'll just hit this button and you see that we're getting the new value there. All right, so, you, so what you're doing here is you're assigning a variable to it and then you're using that to access its methods. The next way is to use view child or view children. So let's say I want to do that same thing, but instead of doing it all here in the template, let's say I want to do it in the class, right? How do I access all the methods of the child from within the parent class? Um, so what you can do, and I'll just get rid of this and I'll just create a new method called parent change. And then I will add that here. So what you can do is add view child. So it's going to be at view child. And then you want to import that from the Angular core as well. And then you pass in whatever it is that you want to grab. So the selector. So you can use a variable for that. So let's say I wanted to grab this one, right? I can say child and that'll grab that. Or let's say I wanted this button, right? I can say something like my button. And then I could pass that in here and grab it that way, right? But I have a component here and I know that it's the child component, so I can grab it by the component itself. So I can say child component and then I can name it whatever child and then I'll say child component. So now here in the class, I have access to that child and all of its methods. I can say this dot child and then call that amount that I, I mean that method that I needed, right? So let's just go ahead and test this really quick. And you'll see that it still works. We, we have access to everything in the child. Now, let's say that I had um, a, lot of, a lot of children, right? Let's say I had, you know, something like this, right? Let's say I had a bunch of these and I wanted to access all of their methods, right? Well, this wouldn't work anymore because you're just grabbing a, one specific one. So what you could do is you can say view children instead of view child. And then same thing, you pass in which one you want. Don't forget to import that from the Angular core. And this time I'll name it children and it'll be, instead of the, the type being the component, it's gonna be query list and then of, of type child component. And then you wanna import that as well from the Angular core. 
And so now you can access all of the children. So, and it kind of acts as an array. So you can do dis.children and you have all these methods, you know, you can map, you can uh, loop through them, you can filter them, you can get the first or the last item. So for example, you know, you can say first and then now I have access to the first child component, you know, in, you know, if I had a bunch of them, the first one, I'm accessing its methods, right? Or you could just convert this to an array and maybe loop through it and do something with all the children, you know, whatever you want, but that's just an easy way to access all of the children. So the last way that you can communicate is using a service. Um, so I have a service here called um, global service, right? And um, I'm gonna create a method here called add student, which is gonna take in um, a student name, which is just a string. And let's say every time, um, let me, so I'm gonna give the child a um, an array or something, right? So let's just say, students and it's going to have names so let's say every time i add a value to this i want to let every other component um, know that a new value was emitted um, so what i can do is i can grab this service and i can do that here right so i'm going to create a new variable to keep track of that right so i'll say um i'll say students um, I'll just name it students and it's going to be new of type subject and it's going to be string type. So you want to make sure you import subject from the RxJS library, right? So just like that. And so then when we get this new student here, we can say this dot students dot next and then send in the new value. So now anywhere that someone is subscribed to this um, subject, they will get the new value that was sent in, okay? And that's how you can kind of send that stream out to all the different components, right? So in here in my child, right, I'm gonna have, um, let me uncomment this button and I'm gonna remove the one in the parent so I don't get confused. So in here, um, I'll just add a method called add student and then add that to my child class as well. And then I'm gonna inject the new service, right? So it was called global service. And so in here, I'm gonna say this.globalService.addStudent, which is that new method, which takes in the student name, I'll just give it that one, right? And so now if any other component wants to be notified when a new value comes in, all you have to do is inject that service. So I'll say global service, global service. And then here, when I initialize the component, I'm gonna say this.globalService, and then that stream, that subject, I'm gonna to subscribe to it here. So that's gonna give you the value. Remember, we had um, its of type string, and we're giving it the student name, right? So I'm gonna subscribe here, and I'm gonna say um, new value sent, and then I'll just say value. So just to recap, um, basically my child, I call the method from the service, right? So I add a new student and I use that service. So it calls this method in the service, which takes that new name and sends it into the subject, right? So anywhere that's subscribed to this um, subject will get that notification. And then if I call this method again, it, it, you, you know, it just repeats the same thing. It'll send the new name and you can continually grab that from any other component. So then here my parent, when I initialize a component, I subscribe to that subject. Basically that keeps a live stream so that whenever, whenever a new value comes in, it'll just keep calling whatever I want, which right now is just this console log. So let's see how this works. All right, so I'm gonna hit this button. And again, this button is the one inside of the child, right? So this is the one calling the add student method. So I'm gonna hit that button and then you get that new value there, right? And every time after that, it's gonna send that new value, right? So that's just an easy way to communicate back and forth um, using services. And services is probably the easiest way because you can have a stream like this or you can even just store um, all the students here and then just have a method that maybe adds the value to this array and store the data here. And then all the components can just grab from here. 
you know, you can have different types of methods and there's all kinds of stuff that you can do with services, um, which is why services is usually like the most popular way to communicate between components because you just have much more flexibility. Um, but each method is just kind of based on the situation and um, what you need.